Shalom. Giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Bahashim Mukakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And enough respect to the brothers that are out there pushing and spreading the truth to the folkness of the world. Um, this is an article titled, Europe should brace for a reality in which the U.S. is no longer a world superpower. Right? Now, continuing, it says the U.S. may voluntarily relinquish its status as a world super, as a as a world power, and the Europeans must brace themselves for such a contingency, including by boasting their militaries. The German cha um, Chancellor has warned. European nations need to carry out more of the burdens than during the Cold War. In terms of defense spending, Marco, Marco said, because they cannot assume that the U.S. will be there to protect them. Growing up in certain knowledge that the U.S. wanted to be a superpower, we grew up in a certain knowledge that the U.S. wanted to be a world, that it, a world power. Should the U.S. now wish to withdraw from that role of its own free will, we will have to reflect on that very deeply, she said in an interview published in six European newsletters. All right, now jump down. Continuing, it says, jump down to this part where it says, Markel, Markel lamented the increasing selfishness of nations today, which she said con contrast with the unified multilateral response to the 2008 financial crisis. These days, we have to do all we can to stop ourself, um, ourselves collapsing into protectionism, she said, right? And we'll look that word up. Protectionism. It's a theory or practice of shielding a country's domestic in industries from foreign competitions by taxing imports. All right. So basically, you want to eliminate um, competition. You want to make sure your economy thrives and that you don't have a foreign um, industry coming into your country and, and, you know, basically taking all your money out. So you tax them. Um, to you know, um, to give your 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 country, um, your your in the industries that are native to your country a chance. You know you don't want you want to eliminate competition. Basically, what it is. So it's all about money, all right. And she says these days, right here, we have to do all we can to stop ourselves collapsing into perfectionism. She said, if Europe wants to be heard, then it needs to set a good example. Um, Right, this is the part I wanted. Perfectionist approaches are at the core of the Trump administration's foreign policy. Okay, under Trump, Washington pushes for the re renegotiation of trade deal that the U.S. president saw as unfavorable to his country. He also dialed up to 11 the criticism of European NATO members like Germany, which failed to meet their military spending obligations calling them freeloaders and his administrations has made confrontations with China on all fronts a priority ramping up the pressure on third nations to scare them away from cooperating with Beijing all right so now now they see the problems that America is causing okay now they're seeing that America doesn't even really care about them they see that America it, you know, like she said, uh, renegotiation of trade deals. Okay, so the U.S. don't really care about the interests of people. They really care about the interests of themselves. And these countries are seeing that. Now, this is um, Revelations, right? Um, let's look. Seventeen. Um, right, verse sixteen. And the ten horns which thou sowest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Okay, NATO and the whore being America.
because when we jump down to verse 18, it says, And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth, the world superpower, okay, which is America, right? So it says, the, the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. Okay? Look, there is nothing like the Bible. There is nothing, matter of fact... Uh, the word of the Most High Man is is, is powerful. Mm. Isaiah chapter thirty-four, verse sixteen: Seek ye, out, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. None of these shall fail; none shall want her mate. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered them. Okay? Now, get down to Second Esther's chapter 15, starting from verse 1. It says, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Alright? For they are faithful and true. Now... Damn fireworks. Let's get to hmm. Habakkuk. I always have to bring this out. Uh. Right, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come to pass. All right? It'll, um, Amos chapter 3, starting from verse 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall they be evil in the city, and the Lord has not done it? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophet. Verse 8. The lion has roared, who will not fear? The Lord has spoken, who can but prophesy? All right? Because what? You, you, you go to Lamentations, um, the third chapter, verse 37, tells you that, who, who is he that say, who is he that saith? And it come to pass when the Lord commandeth it not. All right? Nobody can turn prophecy. When the Lord speaks something to existence, it will come to pass. Nobody in heaven or on earth has the power to turn it upside down, to flip it. That is the power of the Lord. That, see, you really have to, you, this is what, this is why you can't really imagine the full power of the Lord. Because look, his word alone, and look how powerful it is. Look how powerful it, it is. He speaks things into existence. You, <laughs> but hey, man. Bottom line, this place is gonna be destroyed. Okay, the day of the Lord is at hand, and it's not gonna be all happiness. It's not. That day cometh, and uh, you're gonna hear men, women screaming because <laughs> they are not prepared. Because they're not prepared. Quick Jeremiah chapter 51, you know, come out of her. Right. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense, okay, which is Babylon, which is also America. All right. So, look, man, flee out of Babylon mentally, man. Really, this whole world, you need to flee out of this whole world mentally because the judgment is coming upon all the world. All the, 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 it's coming, you can't escape it. The Lord is going to create all types of turmoil, and the only way you can't prepare car carnally, you can't. There is nothing you can buy, there is nothing you can make to, to save you from what's coming. 
Um, because <laughs> people really, this, this is Jeremiah chapter 10. People really think that this is what the Lord is. Um, well, before I read Jeremiah chapter 10, um, let's go to Zephaniah, the, the first chapter, verse 12. Right, it says, and it shall come to pass at the time at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lease. That they say in their heart, the Lord will, will not do good, neither will he do evil. Okay, and why why is the Lord gonna punish them? Because in Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 5, it says they are upright as a palm tree but cannot speak they they must need to be born because they cannot go be not afraid of them for they can they cannot do evil neither neither also is it in them to do good so the lord is going to punish people who say who made that statement um or who have that mindset of zephaniah the first chapter because they really think that the Lord is not real, or they really want to, they really diminish the Lord in their mind. Okay, they really think that the Lord is out there who can't do anything. Because Esau really pushes that agenda that gods are not powerful, and 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 men are really the most powerful, free will, and we could do whatever we want. But look, man, that's that's not true at all. That's that's not true in any way. But yeah, this place is going down. This place will utterly be destroyed. All right, because it deserves it. So with that, I want to say shalom to the brothers that are watching. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Barakatha. To the few awkward students that are watching, shalom. Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Barakatha. All right, so with that, I'm going to end it right here.